Greetings, I'm Shad, and this video is a little out of the ordinary. What it is, is that an online school contacted me and asked to, me to uh, share some, uh, some thoughts, some motivational thoughts about uh, what it means to pursue your dreams and be successful in life. And uh, I you know, jumped at the opportunity because I'm actually very passionate about that subject. Uh, I've learned a lot along the way, and it, it's, it was an opportunity for me to share those things because as I reflect back, yeah, there's a number of things I've learned that I feel might be beneficial. And because of all that, I recorded it. I recorded it live. Um, and I'm going to be sharing that now with you. So, yeah, you might get something out. I hope you do. And, of course, I hope you enjoy it. Oh, thank you. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. I really appreciate the invite. Um, and I'm here to uh, share some of my thoughts about, uh, I guess, the journey that's brought me to where I am. Because from this perspective, uh, I feel very, very lucky. Uh, I've achieved many of the things that I've set out to do. And some have been pretty lofty, high-minded goals and aspirations. And uh, it's not done yet, you know. Uh, we, as was just mentioned, I, I'm intending to build a castle. And not just one, a couple. Um, and it's, it's going to be a long process. I've only just started to, you know, uh, buy the land and everything. Uh, and that's just the first thing. Uh, there's uh, other goals, of course, that I still intend to achieve. And from uh, an outside perspective, uh, I can understand that uh, those things, these goals, could seem rather unrealistic and uh, unattainable. And... Uh, Going through the process and being in such a blessed position to having achieved these things, I've learned a couple of things on, along the way that uh, I feel privileged and honoured to be able to share with you. Um, and, it, and it actually uh, speaks to some fundamental life philosophies that uh, are really important because uh, it, co goes to, it comes down to the uh, idea of success. Uh, now, generally, I think it's safe to assume that most people want to be successful in life. But when people say that, or even when I say that, I think uh, we can fall into a trap or error as to uh, the type of success we think we should be pursuing to feel satisfied, to, to even be happy. And uh, the danger with that is that if we associate the idea with success with, say, success in your career or financial success, the pursuit of those things can sometimes be very difficult, almost drudgingly, and it can even make us quite miserable. And the difficult reality that uh, we all need to kind of acknowledge, and I need to, needed to acknowledge this myself, is that most people don't actually achieve their highest dreams. There are certainly uh, uh, many goals in life that I think we should work towards that are much more attainable than others. But then there are some really kind of high up their dreams and goals that uh, I feel many people aspire to. And the uh, unfortunate reality is that most people don't achieve it. And the question is why? Because if you can understand that question, then you can try and avoid those pitfalls. And one of the, I guess, reasons is... Uh, it's, a, it's very hard. It's very, it's a, it takes a lot of work. But work is not the only thing. There is another aspect to this that is very, very key. In actual fact, when I kind of look at um, uh, the uh, main qualities you need to achieve, uh, when I say success, I am kind of referring to the, uh, the success in your career and the higher goals and things like that. Uh, which is why I want to pause here and not talk about the two main things that I think you need to achieve that because I feel we're skipping something really, really important, which is one of the key things. And that is not the actual achievement of the goal, but the process, the journey that you're going to be going through to get there. Because if you're not going to be enjoying the journey or the process, you're going to be miserable. And because some of these goals and dreams are very difficult to achieve, it took me years. And if that's the reality, you hope you're going to be doing something that you will enjoy. And for me as a young guy, I hated work. I really hated work. Uh, if it was something that I wasn't enjoying, it was the most difficult thing to motivate me to do anything. And because of that, I actually struggled quite a lot in school. I got very poor grades. And uh, on top of that, and this is a, a kind of interesting thing, because now being an author, you'd think, hang on, how does that work? Is uh, I hated uh, the, the uh, class, you know, the subject of English, okay? Uh, whenever I had to do English in school, 
I got very poor grades, I didn't like reading, I didn't like writing, and I almost got kept down in grade six because I was, such, I was so bad at spelling. And so that's how, poor, how, how poorly I performed in school and academia in those early ages, and it's because I, that was so difficult to motivate me. Yet, there was this golden kind of key, you know, thing that would flip the tables completely. And it was as if I was working on something I was interested in, if it was related to a passion I had, because if it was suddenly related to something like that, it wasn't like I was working. It didn't feel like I was working, and I could spend hours upon hours doing things that actually require a lot of focus, a lot of effort, and uh, honestly can f be very, very tedious. And I could spend hours on doing it because suddenly there was a goal I was aiming towards. I wasn't thinking about the process, even though sometimes the process can be a bit tedious. I was aiming towards that goal, and then I was also finding a way to enjoy the tedious process and part of that was feeling satisfied with what I was achieving. And so what those things were usually was if it was related to something I was interested in. Like, you know, see the, see the swords behind me here? If it was related to fantasy swords, medieval stuff, bang, I was, I was there. And one of the biggest passions I had in life was creating stories and characters. And the way that I would exp express that passion in my early years was in drawing. I would draw these characters, and that led me to believe or think that I wanted to be a comic book artist, do Spider-Man, make Spider-Man comic books as a profession. And uh, because that's what I thought I was enjoying. And it actually took me years, years upon years, to have, figure out and realize I don't like drawing. It took, I, the actual act of drawing is not enjoyable. Um, and I only discovered this after working for years to develop this specific talent, to be able to do it to a competent level. Um, uh, so I spent years doing this, and then I, as people started to ask me, because I got good enough, people were asking me to draw for them. I even had a couple of commissions, and so I was finally getting to a point where I might have been able to do it professionally. And when I took on these, um, uh, these uh, commissions, I hated it. It was boring as anything. And I didn't know why at first, and it took me still a couple of years after that to realize that it wasn't the drawing I was enjoying, it was the realization of these stories and characters I had in my head that I loved. And that was another key to branch out and use that as a motivating foundation to dive into other aspects of academia to educate myself, to actually get into, uh, you know, well, I, exactly as I said, to start educating myself and start finding a uh, means, a fuel to, to, to enjoy it. And uh, one of the things, because it's funny, I went off on a bit of a tangent there because I started talking about this in the sense that how long have I been working towards these dreams? Or one of the reasons I wanted to be a comic book artist was basically I wanted to find a job that didn't feel like work. There's a, a common saying, you know, if you do what you love, you don't have to work a day in your life. That honestly was my ultimate goal in life. I wanted to do something that I enjoyed because it wasn't really about being fight, like rich or anything like that. That wasn't actually what I was after. What I was after was uh, having a happy life, an enjoyable, happy life. And uh, one of the things that I didn't really understand then at an early age is that it isn't just about being successful in your career or, uh, or being rich or anything like that that's gonna lead to happiness. Um, it can be related. It can be related quite, um, you know, in some significant ways because having financial freedom honestly re uh, relieves you of a lot of stress in life, of course, and things like that. But it shouldn't be the foundation of the happiness you're pursuing. One of the main things that I've learned, um, and it is related to this, in terms of uh, finding happiness in life is uh, being satisfied with who you are, learning to love who you are, learning to love what you do. And, uh, and that, that thing about learning to be happy with who you are is uh, a very key thing I've found in life that has uh, helped me um, find uh, contentment, stability, and also helped me achieve other goals and everything. And, uh, and so then how do you do that? How do you become satisfied with who you are? Well, part of it is actually working, interestingly enough. And I hated work. Hang on, how does that work then? And it's because... Generally, we admire people who achieve things. I know I do. I admire people who have achieved things, and I think, gee, I, I wish I could achieve that. But then also we admire good people, and then we want to be good people. And one of the most fundamental things in 
uh, enabling us to be satisfied with who we are as individuals is to be a good person. That's kind of the first and foremost thing. But part of being a good person is also fulfilling your own responsibilities because we, there's a natural understanding of people who don't you know, do the things that they are supposed to do, we don't consider that good. In fact, we kind of associate it with laziness and other things. And so if we associate a good character with people who fulfill their responsibilities, therefore we're gonna like ourselves more if we do the same, if we fulfill the responsibilities we have. And so suddenly we can see that all these things are starting to be connected because if you have goals that you want to achieve to help support yourself, support others, to gain success and other things like that, you're going to find that you're going to need to work and that you're going to need to, or you're going to have responsibilities that you're going to need to try and fulfill. And as you do that, once you start to successfully fulfill these responsibilities and you realize, you look back and look at all the work that you've done in the, through the process, you're going to suddenly feel very fulfilled and satisfied. And that's going to lead to being you f lead to you feeling happy with who you are because you think these are the type of people you admire, you see those qualities in yourself and suddenly you start to feel content within yourself and that's leading yourself to being happy. And then suddenly a lot of other, you know, s tangential things aren't really mattering. And yes, there are stresses along the way, like um, being financially secure and stuff like that, but they're much easier to handle if you can nail down these things first. And in nailing these things down first, um, finding a way to be content with who you are and things like that, you're going to um, land upon one of the key things that you actually need to achieve some of these loftier goals. Because it's going back with what I was saying towards the beginning, if you're not enjoying the process and you have goals that you want to achieve and they take a lot of work to achieve them, and so I had this goal early in my life, I wanted to be, a com I want to be successful and financially, and so, it took a process of 20 or more years, okay? Um, I had that goal, and then later when I actually started to understand more completely what I wanted to achieve, like be a writer, I discovered it wasn't the drawing I was enjoying, but it was actually the process of creating stories, and that enabled me to enjoy something I had hated my whole life, which was writing, okay, literature. I started to write, and I found I could enjoy it incredibly. Like this might actually started becoming one of the most fulfilling things I've ever done in my life, because far more than just drawing a character, I could express these characters in their personality, I could write these full stories, and I got engrossed in it. And by the way, that led me to doing like hours upon hours of study into subjects that were related to it. I'm writing in the medieval period now, okay, I needed to learn more about the medieval period, and I already enjoyed that subject, so I started to dive in and learn more about the medieval period. But I wanted to learn about how things should operate in regards to magic and stuff, so I started to learn about physics. I would go onto Wikipedia and just read Wikipedia article after Wikipedia article, and suddenly I am engrossed in these academic pursuits to a level that I had never been in before. And, uh, and so when I started to realize I wanted to write, uh, which was around 2007, it took, what, so I published my novel in 2019. So there we go, you know, uh, do the math, that's like 12 years. I hope I got the math right then, because math was never one of my strong subjects either. Um, so uh, if it's going to take that long, to achieve these goals, which is kind of now um, connecting back to one of the points I was making, you need to uh, find a way to enjoy the process, otherwise chances are you're either going to be very unhappy and lead a very unhappy life if the process is making you uh, miserable, or you're going to give up because it's too hard and you won't achieve it. And that was the key thing for me that I actually needed to realize, is that if I wanted to achieve these things, okay, um, uh, how much was I willing to commit myself and dedicate myself to achieving it? And, and I realized it was probably gonna take a lot, a lot, but then I realized something else. And this is, uh, again, I, I, one of the main key things that helped me achieve these things in life is that I realized I enjoyed doing this. I enjoyed writing, I enjoyed creating characters and worlds and things. And I realized if I spent the rest of my life just doing that, just writing, creating stories, characters and everything, and never getting published, never actually achieving that goal, I could spend my whole life working towards that, never achieving it, okay? I realized that I still would have led a happier and more fulfilling life than if 
I lived a life where I had given up on that dream and uh, I just pursued some other type of success, like financial success or something like that. And that actually put me in the mindset where it didn't matter how long it was going to take. I would just keep at it because that's what made me happy. And, and that's one of the uh, like things that helped like has put me in such a good position now because now having achieved some of those goals as well, I still love that process. And so it compounds and it just builds to a more satisfying and filling life. But also realizing that thing was the thing that enabled me to spend far longer because if I was just in it for making money and that, that end goal and I wasn't enjoying the process, I would, like I said, I either have been miserable or... I would have given up. When you work towards something for however many years, right, and you still haven't achieved it, that can feel depressing and can get you down and disheartened, okay? And so, and especially if you never achieve something in life, that can be pretty depressing. And so how do you get through those times, especially if something you're working towards is going to take a really long time and you're, you've spent so much time on it and you still haven't achieved it and you, you, you uh, have... You know, you can rightly think, you're justified in thinking, well, I have achieved it because you spent so much time and you still haven't gotten there. And that's a perfectly valid, you know, doubt to have. Okay, so how do you get through that? Well, if you're enjoying the process, as I mentioned, if you're still finding fulfillment and happiness in it, that will be the key thing that will enable you to keep at it, to not give up, even at the times when you can feel a bit down because you haven't gotten there yet. If you're still enjoying what you're doing, that will enable you to keep doing it and not give up and get through it because the people who really do succeed at those things, at the highest dreams and goals in life, are those people that just don't give up. And it makes sense because if you give up, of course you haven't achieved it because you gave up. <laughs> um, but the reality is some people and you know might not achieve them in life and that could have been me as well. And so that was that realization, realizing that, okay, even if I don't get this, I'm, I will still have lived a happier, more fulfilling life. And I... and and has more than enough. I don't need to be rich. I don't even need to be hugely successful. If I'm happy and content with what I'm doing and what I'm achieving, that's all you need. That's all you need. And so it is related to what I was saying before about finding satisfaction and being a good person, being happy with who you are, because what I, when I realized that, okay, this is what I wanted, all right, and then I spent a year or two years writing a book, okay, suddenly that's achieving a really difficult thing. Not many people write books. I never thought, I never thought I would do that. Remember, I hated English. I never nearly got kept down in grade six. So I never in a million years thought I would ever do that. And then after, I tell you what, the feeling I had when I had finished my first novel, and it wasn't any good, by the way, this is going back to the next part, the things you need to be successful, actually, because you need a process, but how do you actually get there? The first book I wrote was terrible. Okay. The writing quality was atrocious. Okay. But the feeling I had in finishing that book was one of the most fulfilling and uplifting feelings I've ever had in my life, okay? Because I achieved something, a really difficult goal that I had spent ages working towards. And once you reach it, I tell you what, I can make you happy. And so, because that's, as I was saying before, we admire people who fulfill their responsibilities and achieve things in life and work hard. And if you get those qualities in you, you're gonna be satisfied and happy with who you are. And then if you can get those things nailed down, suddenly it's gonna help out so many other aspects in your life and it might be the very thing that'll enable you to put in the effort and work you need to achieve those things. But what are those effort and works? What are those qualities that, remember I said we're gonna pause there and talk about other things first. Now we're back to that. What are those things that you need to achieve major goals in life? And to me, there are two main things. Um, and you don't necessarily need both, but they definitely help. And if you don't have these things, well, good news is, you can develop them, okay? Anyone can develop these things, but it's gonna take effort on your part, but you can do it. And so what are those two things? First is the capability, the competence, the actual skills you need to do it, okay? All right, if you're wanting to do something that, uh, that other people need to value for you to be able to do it financially as a career or something like that, you need to do it in such a way that other people are gonna value it as well, and that usually requires being able to do it well. And if you can't do it well, not only will you not, you know, uh, be able to be successful in that pursuit, you don't actually deserve it either because you shouldn't accept other people, to, you shouldn't expect other people to accept substandard quality. 
You should have that, you know, expectation upon yourself to reach the level that other people should desire in terms of whatever you're trying to do. And that was the same with me for writing. But I was terrible at writing when I started, really, really bad. And so what did I need to do? I need to get better at it. And we are so blessed and lucky in this world, in this life right now, in the world right now, to have so many resources available for us to be able to learn and develop the abilities we need that. So that's one thing, remember, though. Because there's another side to this as well, because having said that, there should be a caveat that, you know, there are people who are successful in life that actually aren't that skilled, but I generally feel they're the exception to the rule. The standard rule is the better you can perform something, the higher chances you will have of being successful out of of whatever you're doing. The other side to this is the drive and the passion and the, honestly, the ambition to do it, okay? Okay. Because I have, I have known a lot of incredibly talented and skillful people in my life who have never gone anywhere in regards to uh, using those abilities to build a, uh, a life that is more financially successful, I guess. Because remember, that shouldn't actually be the foundation for your um, happiness and contentment in life. If, if that is, that is not the right way. In actual fact, one of the best ways in terms of finding what I feel to lead, because if we're thinking about what is a successful life, again, I don't think it should be financial success is their main goal. If you want to be successful in life, be happy with who you are, take on responsibility, fill those responsibilities, and one of the best ways to do that is to have a family, in my opinion, okay? Family is one of the greatest avenues for being happy because it enables you to serve others, to take on responsibility, and to fulfill goals and everything like that, and to help other people out, and it comp- it's like this system that compounds in all these qualities to make you happy with who you are, if you do it right. Um, okay, so now we're going back to the, the financial success. So I've known many skillful people who have never had the drive or passion to use their abilities to build to something greater. They're lazy. And I know a lot of people like that. So you could be the most skillful, talented person in the world, and if you don't have the drive and passion, it's never going to go anywhere. And inverse to that, okay, you, if you are passionate, really passionate, okay, and you don't have the skills, it is very difficult to almost, uh, very um, impossible, unlikely that you will succeed, but actually can happen. That is, like, I actually do know of people who actually aren't that massively talented, but they have so much drive and passion and commitment to the pursuit of something that they do achieve. It shouldn't overwhelm everything in life. You need to have balance. But that is actually a profoundly potent thing is uh, having the ambition and drive and motivation to do it. If you don't have that, that is something that you can develop. And it's about setting goals, finding out a way in which you can pursue it and be satisfied in the pursuit. Remember that key thing, okay? Because for me, if I wasn't enjoying the actual process in achieving these things, I would have given up because I was so hard to motivate. Remember how hard I was saying how hard I was to motivate to do anything? Um, Mr. Ross can actually tell you stories about how difficult it was for my parents to get me to do chores and and sweep the porch or do the dishes and everything because it was drudgery, it was work, I didn't like it. Yet, when it's something I'm passionate in, I've been able to work harder in these pursuits, devote more man hours, time, work through the night multiple times than any other thing I've ever done in my entire life because I was enjoying the process and I was invested in the goal and that built into a passion, into a motivation, into an ambition that that's what I wanted. And then after doing it for eight years and not getting anywhere, not achieving anything, I was still passionate in that pursuit. Because along the process, um, when I decided I wanted to be a writer, there were many times when you see those people looking at you with doubt in their eyes saying, all right, yeah, because it takes sacrifice as well. When I wanted to be a writer, I realized I needed to find ways to devote more time to it. And that was working part-time instead of full-time. It meant I had barely any money. I needed to find a way that we would have enough money to support my family because I still had a family, so I needed to make sure there was a situation where I could get enough money to support my family, but also devote the time I was running my writing. But that did mean we were right on the line, technically, you know, on the poverty line, um, for a couple of years there because those are the sacrifices that I knew I needed to make to find the time to work towards my goal. 
Now, with YouTube, because YouTube has really taken off, uh, I never would have actually started doing YouTube if I didn't have that goal of being a writer either. Uh, there there might have been other things that um, sent me towards that direction, but being a writer was one of the main um, goals and motivating things for me to start YouTube because I wanted to build a fan base towards being a writer. And so that led me to um, pursuing and developing other things that would ultimately work towards it. Because well, if you have the drive and passion and then you're developing the ability, then there, then you can really start to look at, okay, how can I achieve it? Because uh, the book I first wrote, the book I've written would be a difficult thing to publish traditionally. And so if you're not going to get it published traditionally, how do you get out there? Well, you need an audience that would be interested in it. And so YouTube and all these things kind of are related to what I was, uh, have been saying. And so, um, uh, those are the two main things, okay, um, uh, that will enable you to uh, work towards your goals. And there are so many resources available to us in life um, uh, to help us pursue it. All right, if you have those two things, if you have the ability and skill, I'm going to pause there because there are a lot of people who think they have the ability and honestly don't. Okay. Have you, have you ever seen the auditions for American Idol? Okay. <laughs> and you see a lot of people who are convinced they're the best singers in the world and they're not. And that, I honestly thought, remember that first book I wrote? I can tell you now it's terrible. I didn't think that at the time. I thought it was pretty good. Okay. And so I couldn't just rest on my own naive opinion of my own work. I needed to figure out uh, look at where I was objectively and figure out if I was writing at the standard I needed to do. And part of that was just always trying to improve yourself, okay? Because if, there were, if I was the best writer in the world, I shouldn't be able to improve. But I knew I was studying, I was working towards, and I was getting better as a writer, so therefore I mustn't have been perfect because I'm always getting better at it. And then I could look back at something I had written a couple of months ago even, and even more so, the more, because the, the more skill you attain, the uh, more the, the more able you are to see the errors in your own work when you look back. Oh, and I just knocked off my um, headphones. I'll put those back on. And so always working it towards um, improving yourself. And one of the ways that I did that was utilizing the tremendous amounts of opportunities are in life. Because there are some people that, you know, you could say are luckier than others and have more opportunities. But to think that there are no opportunities in your life is the incorrect way to do it. In actual fact, I think today in the modern world, we have more opportunities. You have more opportunities to be successful in this, this regard than at any other point in human history. And that's not an understatement, okay? Because so much is available. And for me, I needed to learn how to write. So guess what? Do you know I've actually participated in about four to five years worth of university, um, sorry, four to five years worth of university level, you know, educations in creative writing, and I've never gone to university? I'm not, uh, because the, the, the reason is, is that the, the creative writing lectures are available online for free. And I could participate and educate myself in that and participate in several years worth of education to learn. And now there are some places where the information you need is not available online. There are some things that you need to go to university, of course, to learn. And I'm not saying you, there isn't, but there are also many other resources that you can utilize to gain the skills and ability you need to be successful in whatever you want to do. And for me, there were years and years of resources available for me to develop those things because the opportunities are abundant, okay? And they, the question is, if you can recognize those opportunities and take them and use them when they cross your path, okay? Recognize the opportunities when they cross your path and then jump on them and, and actually employ them to the highest, because there are a lot of people who just let the opportunities pass by and they wonder why they aren't getting anywhere in, in life in regards to this aspect, okay? They're in regards to achieving their largest and most lofty dreams, they wonder why they're not moving. Well, it's because they're not jumping on those opportunities. Pay attention and realize what they are. And sometimes those opportunities are there constantly. And for me, YouTube was one of them. Massive opportunity that I recognized, jumped on, and it worked out very, very well. This next part I failed to mention in the live stream, but it's an important thing, so I'm adding it in now, and then I can just edit it together, and it's that you shouldn't bet on exceptional circumstances to bring about the fulfillment of your dreams. What do I mean when I say that? 
Well, for instance, uh, my wife and I have been starting to watch uh, the earlier seasons of Australian Master Chef because it's an easy watch program, light viewing, and my wife enjoys cooking and other things. And one of the things that really strikes me, that's really interesting about, it, is that all the contestants there, they're putting all their eggs into this one basket where if they win this competition, that will, you know, enable them to achieve their dreams and, and so on. And in addition to this, what's also interesting, most of the people who win uh, that competition don't actually go on and make something out of it. Most of them just, that's it. There's only been a couple of people who've actually made something out of it. And in addition to that, uh, some of the people actually become really successful in that field in uh, actually, you know, cooking or whatever, are not the people that win the competition. And this is really important for, you know, anyone who has lofty high dreams and things like that, where I, I really see some people thinking that something big needs to happen for them to achieve what they want. They need to win the lottery or they, they something needs to happen. You need to meet someone who will make the right connections. Now, of course, luck will play a role to a certain level, but not everyone is that lucky. And you shouldn't, you know, think that you will be or, or <laughs> rely on so those things to happen because they're very rare. And as a result, if that's what you're betting on, most likely it's not going to happen. Another point that it helps emphasize this is the fact that so many people who win the lottery end up going bankrupt, okay, because they haven't learned what you need to actually do to develop that wealth and maintain the wealth. And that's just talking about, you know, uh, money and stuff, not actually about, uh, you know, the process and work you need to do to actually achieve your dreams. Like if someone wanted to be a world famous chef, you would be much better, you would work towards that goal so much more than put betting on a very rare chance that you might actually win a type of competition. No, it will serve you much better to actually get a job in the field, learn how to do it effectively, start doing the grind, okay? And also finding out if you actually enjoy it. There are a lot of these contestants who, they're there just because they want to be on TV and they're not even sure if they actually enjoy cooking and they want to actually pursue cooking and just and so you need to find what you enjoy, of course, as I've been mentioning in these other parts. The next part is related to this about um, relying on something else external to yourself to give you the push. Well, not, like I said, it can happen. It's rare, but not always. But the thing here, what I'm saying is some people kind of expect others to help them out you know, or feel entitled to certain helps or boosts because of whatever situation or circumstances that they feel entitles them towards that. That is a profoundly negative and destructive mindset, okay? Do not think or assume you are owed anything by anyone, okay? Because if you do, you're going to hit reality like a brick wall when you realize that that's reliant on other people and people don't have to do it because they're in control of themselves and you're only in control of yourself. And if you're relying on other people to fulfill these expectations, well, they don't have to. And you're just going to get resentful and annoyed and angry when they say no, because most often they will. If you want people to help you out, you need to earn it. OK, don't rely on the, the, um, the charity of others. And look, people should be charitable. I'm not saying they shouldn't. OK, but demanding it is a profoundly negative, destructive mindset because it's just going to make you entitled and resentful and you're not going to achieve anything because you're relying on others and not yourself. OK, <laughs> you need to rely on yourself, be confident in yourself and realize no one owes you a thing. OK, and even if there are things or circumstances that legitimately do, thinking that is still a negative thing, okay? Because still, there's no guarantee that's going, that the thing that you are rightly owed is ever gonna be given to you, all right? You need to realize that there are profound amounts of opportunities already available to you, okay? And look for those, grab hold of those, take advantage of those opportunities instead of demanding some very, you know, slim chance kind of the reality that something might be given to you to help you there. It might happen, but expecting it is means that you most because when I say it might happen, you need to realize how you need to realize how rare that is. Because then, if you're relying on something so rare, most likely it's never going to happen, and then you're just going to sit around waiting, never achieving. No, you actually have to realize you're in control of your own destiny. Stop relying on others. Stop expecting others to give you a handout. Okay, and figure out what you can do 
to do it. And you don't need many resources to get started in this. If you think, well, you know, people have gone to university and I can't, okay? So much is available to you for free. I have participated in several years worth of university education courses, right? For free. All right. If you have access to the internet, if you're watching this, if you're watching this video, that there proves that you have profound opportunities to achieve what you want in life, to educate yourself, to build skills, to do so many things. Take advantage of those opportunities and stop expecting circumstantial, very small, slim chance things where some, you know, knight in shining armor or whatever might come upon you and uh, win the lottery, essentially, give you, uh, help you out, get there, and achieve all your wildest dreams just give, handed to you on a silver platter. That's not going to happen. Don't expect it to happen, and don't demand it from others. <laughs> very important, all right? There is rarely, so rarely ever, a easy win, everything is handed to you to achieve your dreams that takes work and effort over a long period of time. Bettering yourself, increasing your abilities, your own skills, finding motivation to do, put in the you know, hard, work, hard yards and work, find a way to enjoy it. And if you're not enjoying it, perhaps that's not the dream you should be pursuing, okay? You need to find a dream in which the pursuit gives you fulfillment and that's very important because if it happens that you never achieve it, you don't want to have a miserable life. You want to have a fulfilling, uplifting life. And so find the right dream, okay? Even the big lofty ones. And also set small dreams, <laughs> small things to achieve first, okay? Because when you achieve even easier goals, it gives you an immense amount of satisfaction. And it's that one small step towards there. You know, the old adage, how to eat an elephant, one, you know, bite at a time. Same with your dreams. How do you achieve such high level dreams? How do I plan to build a castle, right? One step at a time, one small step after another. Set out a plan in which you can achieve these things. Figure out what you need to do. Do you need to learn skills? Okay, I need to learn this, I need to do this. Start learning, look it up online. Look at, if it's a, a, an, an area of expertise that you actually need to go to higher education, set out a plan to achieve it, okay? If you're not planning or working towards the things you want to achieve, you don't deserve to achieve them. It's that simple, okay? It takes effort on your part and desire, and also, uh, also you have to uh, be empowered, that's it. You have to realize that you have the capacity and it's all on you, okay? And yeah, people probably will help you out along the way, but don't expect it or demand it, okay? Pretend or act like it's all on you to do the work and then find satisfaction in the process. So that's the thing I wanted to add. And really, I should probably sign off this video now because these are things I've kind of learned along the way and they've really helped me out right, in a massive way, helped me achieve some of the biggest dreams and aspirations I've ever had. And uh, I have more and I'm really confident I'm going to achieve it because I kind of know the process now and I wanted to share that process with you. So thank you for watching. I, I do hope you've gotten something out of it. I won't presume you might have known this stuff already, but um, if you have... Um, it is my honor to share it with you. Hope you have enjoyed, and of course, I hope to see you on the next video of Shadowversity. So until then, farewell.